Hi friends! This is Dainty Tink. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back to Heaven Will Be Mine. This is part four in the series. Let's have some fun. Last, speaking of fun, last time Saturn had quite a bit of fun with Luna Terra there. So, let's resume, shall we? I think... Boop, boop. Yeah, we're on day five. Load. Okay. <laughs> so we didn't get to catch too much information here. <laughs> Don't make it sound like I hate following command any less than you. Don't worry. I would never doubt that. Hey, Mercury. Why are you still with Celestial Mechanics? Why are you? If you still are, that is. You're the one who can choose. Mercury. Oh, don't. <laughs> if you hadn't hijacked String of Pearls, you'd be here like me, waiting. To see if it's true that we can be what, be what comes after being human. I don't want that for you. I certainly don't trust or believe in Celestial Mechanics or Iapetus. But wasn't that the worst part? Even after he decided we weren't good enough to be the chosen pilots, neither of us left. He knew we wouldn't leave, because we already wanted it too much. Do you still want that more than anything else? I don't know. I know what I don't want. It's to have nothing to show for it. Ooh. Nothing to show for what? Coming to space, going to the academy, never having a chance to fight in the Cold War, not having a say either way, falling stupidly for the worst man alive. I'm counting on you, Saturn, to give me something better than just the same Earth we left. You never have to worry about that. I have only the highest ambitions for us. Those girls you're flirting with better have a decent future for us, is all that I'm saying. Sure, fine, okay. Only if it's a really good one. If nothing else. I'll make sure that he doesn't get the future he wanted. Ha! Any future but the future he wants is good. Give me and Ganymede a good place. There. Wherever and whenever it is. Okay, who's Ganymede? Okay, okay. So last time we saw the next resolution... Nick's final resignation in which he was like you're asking for my res resignation haha <laughs> you never get it so is this the same peeps it's archives special MF celestial mechanics research lead Iapetus hmm so that was Nyx last time. This is Iapetus replying back. Nyx, you fundamentally misunderstood the purpose of pursuing the dream of space. Never sought to correct you. After all, all of the great things you have accomplished are the result of that misunderstanding. You believe that your dream, so universally loved, was loved because we wanted it to come true. This is not the case, of course. Even though I think the Memorial Foundation truly believed that they wanted the same as you. But as the tides of Earth turn, they realized in their own hearts that they are not the forefront of humanity's change, but slaves to its whims. To protect human culture means to always be at its becking call, no matter what it becomes. And their dream is one of overwhelming power that will unlock the, mo the last mysteries and cement our authority forever. What your children achieved with freedom from gravity, we will have the power to determine on our own. I hope you can understand the depths of my gratitude to you for exploring these ideas, but they might one day belong to us. Ho ho! Okay, Academy Student Research Records. Mercury! Database Leak, Pilot Operations Manager, Europa. 
Of all the Generation 3 pilots, micro, um, Mercury is far and away one, the one best suited to actually be a pilot. To the degree I'd be terrified of giving that position to any other one of Iapetus's nightmare brats. <laughs> nightmare brats. So there's absolutely no chance that he'll be assigned, of course. He really is trying to maximize. What I want to impress, however, is that Mercury is still someone Iapetus chose personally for the pilot role. When he served himself during when he served himself during the Cold War, alongside the current second tier candidate Saturn. Hmm. Mercury used to be a lot different, which is obvious. A lot of our pilots used to be a lot different, for reasons only space can explain. I think reducing it to Mercury's personal stake is an incomplete is as incomplete a reading as it would be for any of our other pilots in Celestial Mechanics. Some of them even know exactly what they're doing. Mercury, most of all. I don't think he has petulant grudges against humanity. He's just very critical. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so alignment. Right now we're leaning a little bit, Celestial Mechanics. We've kind of just ignored Cradle's Grace. Just saying. <laughs> oh, they're gravity wells. <gasps> oh, they're gravity wells on a field. That's so cool. I love that. Definitely interesting. And if you can't see, it's 37% uh, celestial mechanics. So, a little heavier. But interesting, it's on a gravity well like field like this. So cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do mission select. Becoming stars. Lagrange colony is an uninhabitable husk, but Cradle's Grace still clings to it, quite literally. Pluto's dream might collapse under its own weight, or crush Saturn under it. Ooh. Deeper cuts. In the Garden District, closest to the malfunctioning and broken tidal reactor that kept the colony together, time and space aren't quite right. It's a perfect place for a real fight. How deep can Luna Terra's skin do you think she can get? Ooh, Ooh both of these sound cool. <laughs> so, the Lagrange colony is that colony that all of these people grew up in. So let's go to Pluto first. Launch. The whole cal colony? It's so refreshing to see you surprised for one Saturn. I'm soaking it in. <laughs> Mercury. But seriously, he wants me to stop Cradle's Graces from taking the entire colony out of the little Grange Point. Why? Why would they do that? Why would we care enough to stop them from trying? The colony should just rot. It's over. There's nothing left there. Cradle's Graces wants those memories to live again. We need to discard Earth completely and start something new. It's an anchor pulling, pulling us back home. This is sec- the success of opening the gravity well on the moon will depend completely on how much is holding us down. Every weak gravity like that. Even weak gravity like that. <sighs> That's more than just stopping her then. You want me to destroy the colony? That's the mission. Yes. Not that I'm not the greatest, but it not that basically impossible for me? It's huge. There are smaller moons. Do your best then. The less memories, the better. I thought you didn't have any problems. That the colony should just rot. Ha! <laughs> That's a funny joke. We both went through the same shit. Don't ask me that. Every happy memory is made retroactively disgusting by the sort of person Aeopidus turned me out, turned out to be. Ho ho ho! I hate him so much! 
I will never get over how much. Saturn? Yes, Mercury? Then why are you still pretending to be with celestial mechanics? Why are you doing this? Is the real question, Mercury. You know him like I do. So why are you still here? <laughs> I apparently have enough power to destroy a colony. Then I can ditch him whenever I want. Leave Celestial Mechanics. Take Genomede. I'll protect you. I'll make sure there's good future in the end. Oh, maybe Genomede is the uh, uh, ship self for Mercury. <laughs> you absolutely will not be fine if I leave. <laughs> of course, I don't trust him at all. But he wants what I want. It's what you want, too. I can't trust him on anything else. But I can trust him on that. Even if he's just doing this for his own gain. With some other agenda in mind. He's truly going to give us this. Ugh, disgusting. It's what I fell for. So, stop reminding me. That's why I trust you too, of course. Even though I shouldn't. I know you won't accept anything less than what you want. If you can even can get even half of that, it'll be more than enough for me. Hmm. Hmm. Battle in physical space for the future. Hmm. Battle in narrative space for each other. Hoo <laughs> Loyal betray. I've been fairly loyal to celestial mechanics here. But they're trying to destroy a whole colony. I I know that it's a colony they grew up on, so I kinda want more of the story here. Maybe I save. Can I save? I can't save. Okay. I'm just I'm not gonna do it do a save. I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, let's betray. I want narrative. I want lore. Give me lore. And we have no ties to Cradle's Grace right now. Cradle's Grace advances. Saturn rushes in. Because Pluto is ready for this kind of fight. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. Like, you're kidding, right? No, Pluto isn't joking, the farthest thing. The swirl of cosmic nebula dust that completely obscures the colony in Pluto's warm embrace is no punchline. Only insofar as it is true that Pluto is too strong, it's funny. Ooh. The colony no longer resembles Earth. Now it's a gas giant. Or maybe a star waiting to be born. Whatever the case, even though it's certainly too much too late to do anything about it, there's an invitation from inside. Just come try. <laughs> you must think I'm really dumb. Or you must have a lot of faith in me. In which case, you're really dumb. It might, could be Saturn's perfect opportunity if she plays her cards right. Pluto's putting everything she has and more into just attempting to move the colony. If Saturn can find her, She'll be helpless. <laughs> and how am I supposed to do that with you filling up the whole universe? Your story is everywhere, pulling at everything. How am I supposed to complete compete with gravity so strong even the narrative of space-time is bending? Oh, hi, Saturn. Are you just passing through? <laughs> uh, hi. Fancy meeting you here. How did you know it was me? <laughs> Weird to find you in the middle of an incomprehensible cosmic cloud only you can create. I know, what a coincidence. I've sort of been ordered to fire on anyone in it, though. I think this might make things awkward if you try to get closer. You could at least pretend to be a little afraid of me. I am, just a little. But even if I should be, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I hope that's not a lie. On either part. 
Ooh. No, it isn't. If I were dangerous and very special, and you wouldn't be here if you couldn't stop me. Hmm. Even if you're not quite ready for how hard that will be. Huh. I'm not impressed that you didn't decide to sneak up on me while I was thinking, though. It would have been a good chance. Oh, are you maybe having second thoughts? I was hoping I'd convince you to destroy this place with me. <laughs> You're impossible. It's adorable. You're incorrigible. I like it a lot, actually. Oh my god, these flirts. <laughs> I even envy it a little. Oh. Um. Thank you. I was just being difficult. Which is very charming of me. <laughs> oh, Saturn. You're not good at taking these. But I was half serious, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> nope. Never. I was almost tempted, though. I don't know what your memories of this place are like. They're bad and good, right? Always a little worse than better. It's the same for me, but this place is still precious to me. It was a seed of life once, and maybe it can bloom again. So, I'm going to protect it. Oh, that reminds me. What are you here for? <laughs> do you mind if I ask a personal question? What are you trying to do with it? I'm going to not destroy it? <laughs> hmm. Oh, pew. <laughs> that was what I was worried about. Oh my goodness. I really know when I'm beat, so I'll just be... Hey! Stop right there! Ooh! Oh? Oh? What? I was just trying to banter! You tried to shoot me! That's dangerous! <laughs> so basically Saturn talked her way in and then was about to shoot Pluto. <laughs> I didn't. You were thinking about it. <laughs> of course. Well, she was. More like Saturn was trying to get a bead on Pluto. String of pearls. Tides ripple through Pluto's nebula cloud, hoping there's something it can find eventually. It's not like Pluto is hiding. She's just everywhere. And it's hard to tell where she ends or begins. Aren't you thinking about shooting me too? You're the one with the advantage on visibility. I'm just sitting here and I can't find it find you in the in that cloud. <laughs> so I was about to say, Pluto's entire ship is terrifying with what it can do here. Oh, you're probably right. Dear super weapon of Cradle's graces, are you actually a little naive? <laughs> I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Was that wrong? Uh, obviously. Sorry, I've never learned to be on my guard. There's no need to be when I can tell what people are thinking. And nothing can touch me. Ooh. If it really actually worked like that, you'd absolutely never trust anyone ever. No, I trust everyone. Huh. So serene. I can always trust people to do what they always do. Do you think you can trust someone to surprise you? Can you trust them to do something you wouldn't even think of? It's when they surprise me that I'm the happiest of all. That's when I really feel we're not doomed, set in stone. 
always making the same mistakes. I'm being stupid and following my heart, just like you. You're going to have to do better than shoot at me if you want to surprise me. There are other ways to fight. You're better at that than I, than me. <laughs> I think you can surprise me. Is that what you want? Oh, interesting. On Earth, our souls are weighed down by gravity. At the same time, gravity holds us together, tells us who we are, good things and bad. The Earth's gravity is strong because it's all of us together. Forces that would be insignificant on their own are powerful enough to make a planet that we hold it to when we hold it together. That's why we are much stronger on the Earth. Even the weakest human has this, has that sacred light of the soul and its many powers. To forbid direct contact with that soul, to wield the arts of science's shaping existence, to be many and also one. In space, our gravity is weak. Without the constant pressure of tidal reactors, our souls would dissolve the way that water, at high enough altitudes, will evaporate off of a pilot's tongue without atmospheric pressure to remind it to be water. Ooh. Stories bleed into each other easily, and our shapes don't hold steady. The fragility of our ships couldn't survive a moment on Earth. In space, there are things we could never do on Earth. With our heaviness, we could never be so tender. <laughs> okay, I get it. Let's pick up from earlier, but fight in a way only pilots can fight. In a way only us, close to the edge of being human, can fight. That isn't fighting at all. Do you feel the same way, Pluto? You are listening, right? I was going to tell you I didn't have time to play today, but it sounds like you know I still want to anyway. That's going to uh, make it harder to convince you to leave me alone and let me do this. You are here to play, right? <laughs> no, no convincing me. I can pick up on the subtext. Huh? Blame it on the wicked celestial mechanics pilot who bothered you and didn't let, let you get any work done. <laughs> okay. This soundtrack is awesome, by the way. The thing is, it's fun. More fun than hacking. To bleed, corrode, seep into the mist. Saturn can feel every particle and the celestial physics that make them move. It's a swelling orchestration. Pluto is conducting something beautiful, something overwhelming, and the equations and the equations are hints and patterns to how Pluto thinks, to where she might be. It's simple to trace back, easier than hacking too. Space is boring, space is empty, space is broken. Space will never give us everything we want. Space is a hope that what we want to make real might actually be out there. Just reach out to space and time, and we can almost touch it. Space is just a means to an end, but for a moment, Saturn is overwhelmed with how beautiful even the boring, dead, empty space can be. Even just the way that dust moves around. That's when Saturn realizes she has lost. She went in to tear open the story, twist it around, and instead, she got so lost and happy in it, she didn't even notice the clouds swirling around her, the cosmic dust covering her, Pluto holding her tenderly. Pulled into the atmosphere of the colony, they orbit gently. Saturn has no reason to fight. Doesn't even feel like she lost. Feels like she won something special. Okay, interesting. So basically, the cosmic cloud that is Pluto basically moving around Saturn in the atmosphere. Okay. Okay, Saturn. Open your cockpit. Okay. Why? 
Because I trust you. Do you trust me? I do. The same way you trust me. No, I trust you way dumber than you trace me. <laughs> You're so amazing. And <laughs> so much more amazing because you believe in something like being human. You pour your everything in something that won't pay off. That makes me mad. But then, sometimes, I think it might work. Oh. <laughs> okay. Saturn's cockpit opens. Naked guts expose circuits. Krun Makala's thumb presses against Saturn and the extended cockpit exploring. Oh no. Are you going to blow her up accidentally? You're really hooked in good there. Why would you ever do such a thing to yourself? Oh, she's so connected to String of Pearls. You don't have to answer, I, I understand. Your cheek feels human and soft. Oh well, suddenly I don't feel like moving the, the colony much. Maybe not destroyed any more than it, it was before will be good enough. Why am I doing this? I need to get back to my post. But you look so nice like this. I want to get closer. Is that okay? Ah! <laughs> Interesting. Oh, hold on. No, go back. Nah. Hold on. Should be a data log here. What a breeze and move. Okay. I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe you really win this time. <laughs> okay. Data log. Let me get that last mission. Becoming stars. Doop. Put a brazen move. Okay, okay. No, I guess I shouldn't. Mm. Wow, that's so... What a brazen move. Okay. So I didn't really miss much by clicking around. My bad. <laughs> Boop. Boop. So we've still got deeper cuts to go. Very interesting to see these pilots interact in space. Hmm. But that means we have a new gravity line. Oh, and there's only four opportunities needed for them. But celestial mechanics requires a lot more time and effort. But look at the cool gravity lines. I loved it. Okay. Plus, I didn't really want them to destroy a colony. That's sad. Saturn, I would love it. Just love it. Yeah? If you messed everything up this time. Is this reverse psychology? <laughs> Did I really reduce you to that? I'm a little impressed by your persistence in nagging me, but now I'm feeling like I pushed you to your limit. Shut up, and as always, I am serious. Messing things up is literally the only thing in the world no one has ever needed to specifically tell me to do. <laughs> and you keep yelling at me when I do. I've been looking into Yapitis' work, Yapitis' work on the Eversion, Eversion? Eversion project? Oh. How much do you know? More than you know. Of course. It was always suspicious that Diopidus decided to support us. He was very insistent in his interest in taking humanity to the next stage. As if, that is, why any of us wanted to connect with the so-called existential threat. People who already had everything on Earth couldn't possibly understand. They just want even more th for themselves. That's why I thought too. Iapetus' plan is very attractive to certain factions and Memorial Foundation. Certain factions and Memorial Foundation really like the days when humanity was united against the existential threat. So very much like a nationalist kind of view. Except aliens aren't real. Okay, they're a 
nth dimension shadow cast by gravitational impression of human culture in space time, but that makes them a few shades sort of short of few shades sh- so the short sort of real and much less dangerous than their cousins on Earth. And even those are so weak, kids with radios can take them out. Anyways, Pluto wiped them all out. Pluto wiped them out. That was the whole plan. Since humanity doesn't care about them anymore, they'd never expect that we would find a way to avert our tidal reactors and become the aliens ourselves. The only alien is what the alien what is alien to us, and that's fundamentally humanity. We're aliens to ourselves. FX equals so function equals that which is human that humans are not. And Yoptis isn't going to give up any everything he has for that. You think he's lying about wanting to? I think he's lying about about himself wanting to. I think he's happy to let us complete the project and go home. Because he'll have exactly what he and the rest of humanity is longing for. A scapegoat. Someone to be an alien humanity could guiltlessly fight against. Yes. I am fine with abandoning Earth. It hasn't given me anything. But not on his terms. Not ever. Don't worry, Mercury. I've got a plan. No matter what, I won't go his way. Okay. Can you let me in on that plan? Re. Genomede intercept do not read Saturn. <laughs> I'm completely uninterested in communicating with the Optus in any capacity that's not technic- technically. I know my boundaries, but you are very nice to worry. I know you're not jealous because you do respect me, but don't make me worry. It's what I like about you. I know you're worried for me, not about me, and I appreciate that. But I do want to clarify things so you stop asking me about it. Even though it is cute, and I do appreciate it. Really. I'm not just saying that. Please don't hear that in a passive-aggressive voice. (laughs) But I've been meaning to ask this for a while. Is it okay that I believe in this? It's important to me that you understand that it's nothing to do with him. So, I worry that means that you don't understand what it means for me. I don't believe humanity needs to be punished. I am fine being human, but I think it's an important reminder is needed. Not alien in the sense of a foreign other that can bear all of our rage and hatred, but alien in the sense of casting our own features into relief. I think what we see as a result should shame us. But there are many things we need to see. You probably say you support me and believe me. Thank you. But you'll also say that it means something to you too. And that's really why I love you. Huh. Interesting, Mercury. String of Pearl's final specifications. Iapetus message intercept. Hmm. This is not what we talked about. Not by a mile. You know I don't actually have a moral compass that does not revolve around what's cool. So coming for me, just know that I'm- It's my professional opinion that I'm not even sure that this is cool anymore. Creating a theoretical matter is not even hard under laboratory conditions. And in space, it's easy to sustain it. But the creation of exotic matter like electrotoxins can get really not fun if you aren't careful. Since you hate fun, I already know <laughs> that's not what you're after. You don't have to level with me on anything that's fine. But I do want you to know that this thing is basically designed to dis- degenerate as quickly as possible. The reactor tends towards eversion, and that will require a pilot. I really would not want to meet. 
in a piloting style that no one should ever do. Eventually, it's going to drag the pilot down, and that's going to be really weird and ugly, unless they are completely, unless they are immediately destroyed. Clearly, you want that. I mean, you've said so, but if they're going to have to have going to have so much fun, let me try to convince you that you should set a self-destruct in there. Maybe something cool will happen when she ever and this ship self becomes her anchored in space time to mes- mess everything up. If it's not, don't you want a backup option? Hmm. <laughs> okay. There's so much lore in this. Okay, so effectively what Iapetus is saying is that the electrotoxins are a they're part of the string of pearls and they are the fundamental weapon which is fascinating but it's designed to be malleable it's designed to crush and then regenerate and crush and regenerate maybe that's what pluto was saying is that you are hooked in there you are part of the ship more than the regular ship self would be because we've seen Plu- like Saturn's physical form, but like, how much is she getting like absorbed into this regeneration cycle of the ship itself? <laughs> oh, so cool. Okay, okay. Deeper cuts. Ugh, this place. You don't feel like seeing home again? Aw, oh, come on. Don't tell me you don't have any fond memories of the Academy. I do, despite myself, and that's why I don't have any wish to see it like this. A ruined garden that only reminds us how weak the gravity of this whole venture really was compared to Earth. Not to mention, it is all for something completely worthless, too. (laughs) Wait, now you're grumbling about a mission? This is historic! The Lagrange reactor is just a hollow shell, and there's barely any advantage to have to have in getting it. It's better to be uh, it better be a trap to use you as bait to get Memorial Foundation off our trail. <laughs> oh no, what a terrible trap to fall in. More flirting, I see. Is it unbearable? Yes, extremely. Are you really still getting nowhere with her? What are you talking about? I think you said you were going to crack her open and peel her shell. But I don't think you have. Ugh. You don't know anything. Shh. Aw. I'm completely and utterly correct then. Shh. She's highly evasive. Plank, point blank. Or sniper shot. I can't seem to hit her. <laughs> Your type, I see. <laughs> that was a blow, Mercury. Shut up. I got the Academy's most notorious heartbreaker to look like an idiot at me. So I win. So shut up. She's even stupider than I thought she was. But she's not as stupid as me. Ugh. You're the one with all your guts all over the place. Hmm. I think that's more literal than we know. You're the one with your guts all over the place. You're the one who is absolutely just disintegrating and regenerating with the ship. Ah, just <clears throat> fine. I'm frustrated, all right? But it's not because I'm not getting anywhere or because I even care. All right, this time I'm done playing. Happy? If there's anything there, or if she's just metal all the way through, I'm gonna find out. If she is that boring, I'll never forgive her. But I'm coming back with guts this time. Fight for real in a, in a fun way. <laughs> Fight for real in a fun way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going this way. <laughs> A surprise attack isn't very supporting. 
Yeah? Don't be jealous. Just cause I got mine off first. <laughs> what? You got a wound on me. And then lower range reactor shell. <sighs> that not a good enough deal? <laughs> no way. In fact, apologize. Hiding so I can't surprise you again is so unfair, Lunatura. Let me bully you some more. I'll pass. <laughs> Stoicism. Uh, I'll pass. Are you sure? <laughs> you sure you don't want to get bullied? See if you can find me first. You like cat and mouse games, don't you? You want to try it again? I won't let you play a game this time. Can you find me even when I'm serious? Then I'll get serious. Lunaterra hides in the Garden District, the one part of the colony she has no memories of. Garden District doesn't have any trees or flowers or plants. It's not that kind of garden. A garden for the children meant to inhabit space. Not like Lunaterra, who came in the first generation. Teenagers too old and too molded by Earth's gravity to inherit the cosmos. Hmm. The second generation was raised here. In the light of the colony center and the, the Lagrange tidal reactor, Lunaterra remembers like the sun, with the hope that they c will grow freely in the lightest of gravity, free of Earth's weight. Lunaterra is the one holding the useless shell of that reactor now, even broken and useless. LT doesn't feel comfortable holding it. It's an unpleasant, untrustworthy object, and it feels wrong to hold. It was made by people, but it doesn't seem like it was. It's a fake, but it's unsettlingly close to what celestial mechanics eventually intended it to be. When they seized control of the reactor, before the conflict broke out. Something not made by humans. If it's so useless, why don't you just give it back? You can tell what I'm thinking, huh? Or we read between the lines. Just like Pluto, but different. Something I still can't understand. You've been playing with her too, haven't you? I sure have, jealous. Of which of us? Huh? Of which of us, though? Oh. Both. I could never read this story like you both. I'm straightforward. That's not even a little true. You're being too- way too stingy with your narration. Narration? You can't perceive space-time as a story? A narration spun out of the ambient gravity of humans, telling you about everything that is, if you can listen. You can't see how obvious- obviously your envy is bleeding out and everywhere, can you? I'm slipping, though. <laughs> Letting out more than I thought. But see why I'm jealous? I don't know anything about what you mean. I wish I could speak that language. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. You should really be sad you can't- don't speak it. I just have this absence. Your impression of the narrative is something like spilled white out. A gushing ocean of bleach, which is a pain in the ass for someone like me like us. You also have a habit of acting too fast to get caught up in the story, especially when it's not going your way. Three times faster than the story knows what to do with. That's how you are different than Pluto. She would swell into the atmosphere, but you slowly bleed into the spaces between the lines. I can feel you seeping, though. Blurring the lines between one of the uh, one and the other. Was it? What is it you're after? Curious? Then stop hiding. The rain slick streets are looking more and more the same. The weather is malfunctioning. And the moisture regulator is shot, and the fa failing gravity is doing strange things, moving straight, playing strange tricks. 
I was about to say, if it's rain slick, then, like, would water go back up? Would it float? How? Oh, kind of the mental image of this is so cool. So, so cool. Mayor Chrissyham's feet are wet. She's afraid. She's falling right into the trap that feels like it's in every direction at once. You can't trick me. Luna Terrett dodges at the last second. War was never there. If Saturn bleeds into the narrative, then Luna Terra's trick is having a real habit of interrupting the story, just when it's getting good. Good thing she'll never know how much Saturn and Pluto think that's cool. <laughs> I have eyes too, Luna Terra. Don't think gravity alone is enough. Saturn swipes again. Cool sound effect. <laughs> Lunaterra wouldn't be hit by such a thing, but she isn't ready for the dripping, sparkling, neuro-lightning. She misjudges the distance and the unsureness of gravity. Mare Chrysium sparks and bleeds from her left arm. Lunaterra swings her spear, crushing the string of pearls to the ground. It crumples, then darts away, lost in the mist. Saturn's worse off, but her machine will fix itself, and the poison in Mare Chrysium's system is only getting worse. <laughs> you almost got me, but not quite. <laughs> is your game off a little today, Lur Lunaterra? I thought you were going to be serious. You're going to have to do a lot better than that if you want to see me serious. Um, you're misunderstanding. I'm going to cheat. You're the one who has to take this seriously. How is that arm feeling? Still sparking? Still gooey? It doesn't take that much, you know. Have you been uh, cleaning your system regularly? What kind of fight are you looking for? A one-sided fight, where you try your hardest and still lose. <laughs> looking for payback? What? No, who cares about that? It's for you. Because you love getting owned. Oh, that face. You're not holding back. There's no way I can beat you. You're even stronger than any story anyone's told about you. You always win and no one touches you. If ship cell fights were life and death, that'd make you a genius. But they're not. They're made in the image of plastic toys to fight like plastic toys. So that makes you an idiot for not playing along and being honest. <laughs> You'll save a lot of time if you give in and say I'm right now. If you beat me for real, that'll be all the answer you need. <laughs> Stoic to the last, but that's great. You're holding out on me. It's actually kind of delicious. When's the story going to tell me what ha what's happening? When are you going to let me hear about all the static in your joints? The trembling in your mask, your slackening grip. I'm on the edge of my seat, waiting to know. Lunatera knows that it's true. Saturn can't sense where she is at all, but she knows immediately that Lunatera knows she knows. Tell me all about that, and I promise, without any hint or hate or fear, I'll listen. You don't believe me that I b promise. I promise I won't laugh. Or hurt you. I can't see you, so you can escape if you want. I'll let you keep that little ball, even. And the poison will wear off. But I want to see. Do you want to show me? The Mercurium crashes to the ground. Skids along the wet streets of the colony. Her legs give out and her arms are too weak to catch her fall. Shinga Pearls lands gently, surprisingly, but that's what these ships are meant to do. They're meant to land gently. Even the electrotoxins are tingly, not painful, in a warm, numbing sort of way. Like licking a battery with every part of your body. Don't do that, that's very dangerous. There's no way that Lunaterra can stand up. As soon as she lets it all in, she falls in a mess. Totally defeated. Oh wow. 
You really did it. You got so quiet. You're so well trained. You're the big strong ace, but you shut down so quickly. You really can't deal with me at all. Why is that? Didn't you say you weren't going to bully me? I'm showing all possible restraint. You really did make it hard. I thought you were kind of cool. You really acted like you knew what you were doing. Even though you were so, so scared. Leave me alone. Oh no, baby. But you love this. You're looking forward to it. I can see right through you. These ships are meant to touch. If you never lose, you never let anyone in. Thinking of this as losing at all is ki actually kind of sad. You want to give this all up and drag me home? Are you really sure? Lunatera, you really ought to not lie to me so much. This smug, untouchable Lunatera that I used to hate? She's so boring. But the you that you don't want anyone else to see, that's a much better you. That's the you I want to see. Oh, cool. Lunatera is conscious of her own breath, of the unconscious pulsing rhythm of her ship self, which trembles. And not just from the electrotoxins. She really can't move in any sort of effective way. But... What she's feeling isn't fear, or even helplessness. It's anticipation. anticipation. If she thought that she trusted Saturn as much as anyone else, not at all. Now that she has no choice, she's surprised. She trusts Saturn so much, even knowing exactly what she wants to do. Very interesting. Saturn plucks the react broken reactor out of Merichrysium's hands and tosses it away like trash. And I will. Now that I have the power to peel your skin off and see it. I'm really happy. I never thought I'd finally get to see you like this, even though you're letting me. Little secrets just for me. But the narration will never tell. For you only. So only I get to see you twitching and helpless? No one else knows? Not telling. But it's just for you, so keep it ambiguous. Got it. <laughs> I could be straddling you and pinning you. That's certainly possible, but not for certain. I'm not saying anything definite. <laughs> You've got it. Thank you. I've got my pride. Yeah, your pride. Tell me about that. It's worth a lot to me. Then I'm worth even more, right? Oh, <laughs> interesting. So, she actually got hit. And then they actually, like, had a whole battle and ended with, like, holding down, which was so flirty. It's ridiculously flirty. But I really wonder how integrated they are into their ships. Anyways, getting off track. It's January 30th, 1981, and the day is almost here. The deadline to save every everyone who came up to space with us. Fought with us. Tried to bring everyone up with us. If we shut down the lunar gravity well, there wouldn't be any choice left. The power that keeps our ship selves in check will fall apart. Then we wouldn't have anywhere else to go but home. If we kill the dream, no one will die. We really, really hope that's true. No one should die in space. No one should die, period. No one has to die. Because ship self combat is shimmering missiles of light, cosmic explosions, electricity that sears through the soul. Blade science is impossible for the human to produce. Dances of combat without end. A fight against ideas with toys. Humans would never show that sort of compassion to each other. Earth's answer is a single atomic particle fired at near light speed directly into the cockpit core. A true weapon from a military force. 
the quickest, most efficient, instantaneous, unavoidable way to kill a human. The most boring way possible to pointlessly die. No drama, no meaning, no, just nothing. Luna Terra. Ha <laughs> ha. So January 30th, 1981. January. No, that was January 31st, so this is January 30th? Hmm. In the end, they might get everything they want. In a way that no one wants. If we open the lunar gravity well, then we can establish forever another Earth. And maybe another. We can inhabit the whole system, but that will cut humanity into two and more. The distance would be much further. Everything we have is even further from them. How much are we going to lose? How much will we never be able to give them? The moon is very close to being part of Earth. It's full of life, and humans can live here now. It feels impossible, and I don't want to give it up. We should break it off forever, shouldn't we? All I want is to stitch these two humanities together. But if one of us dies as a result, I'll fight forever to keep the precious thing alive. Pluto, Princess of Cradles, Graces. Saturn. It's January 30th, 1981. They don't name it because it's naming, but na because naming it gives it power. But not naming, it gives it more. It must be in every corner, behind every door. Far, far away in the spaces between stars. It is defined and categorized in every human culture, and it is deliberately omitted from explicit naming conventions by Met Ma Memorial Foundation in favor of a euphemism less captivating to the imagination, such as existential threat, rather than a specific word that would stimulate the imagination. But a trick like this will not work. In the euphemism, in the euphemism is a hollow void that could hold all fears and all possibilities. Through gravity, humans decide what is real and what is not. But what is not does not stop existing. And it, like humans, can decide. It's the kiss of the inverse. Everything the humans can imagine, but can't become. The shortcut to obtaining it is to forsake everything that humans already are. If a bunch of idiots get tricked into going there, it would make a very convenient enemy for Earth. That's their real fear. Before that happens, I will tell you a little secret. Ready? Saturn... <laughs> Test pilot. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Root installation complete. New OS in operation. Slash field mechanics fleet collab uh, collecting in the orbit of Earth's moon. Request for assistance received. Ignore. <laughs> Awaiting manual input of the mission parameters. Assist Cradle's Graces and mecha Celestial Mechanics with the opening of the gravity well and changing gravitational constants to make conflict with Earth possible. Okay. Get in as much trouble as possible with the Memorial Foundation Ace. Calculating gra gravitational slingshot data from server hack. Ready for launch? Yee. Yeah. Accepted! Mm hmm. Immediate launch to Earth's moon. Aha! So, fairly interesting. And yeah, you can see a Celestial Mechanics is halfway. Very interesting. Okay, with this, that's ending us for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a little longer of an episode because it was a little bit more to go on. So, let me know your thoughts down below. With that, I love you all and I'll talk to you next time. Bye! <laughs>